both next generation consoles are out and despite all the huffing and puffing from fanboys for months they render as of now roughly the same unsurprisingly at least not surprising to me I wasn't kidding when I detailed the PS5's above RDNA 2 customizations to its geometry engine and ray tracing performance. Just like I wasn't kidding when I told you about RDNA 2's rasterization advantages over Ampere, at least in terms of efficiency. Uh, teraflops are just not how you measure gaming performance. The Ampere launch should have made that clear to everybody, so it's pretty hilarious for me when I look at some surprises to the comparisons of these consoles but nonetheless i hope both types of people are enjoying their new consoles people on xbox and people on playstation in my opinion this is by far a more interesting generation than the last one and i can't wait to keep covering it but those will be for other videos this video is for what probably most people on my channel are watching me for my pc hardware coverage and this video will be a smorgasbord of that type of coverage. Little bits and pieces about Ampere, RDNA 2, and Zen 3, including availability, updates. And for the first little piece of information, I actually did bring up, you know, Digital Foundry and their console coverage for a reason. Well, skimming through their coverage, I noticed an interesting little tidbit about Sekiro. Let me play that for about 15 seconds here. This is a perfect example of checkerboard rendering 1800p versus native 1800p. The visual difference between them is so minuscule, uh, but the performance boost is much more significant here. And as a result, like e I played this really on my PC because uh, I was really having a hard time getting... I, I couldn't adjust to the unlocked frame rate on the consoles for this game. And even on my PC at the time, I haven't tested it lately... I was still getting weird little stutters and hitches here and there. Uh, none of that is a problem on PS5. Yeah, so anyways, I showed this not because I'm sure a version of checkerboarding is what AMD's alternative is to NVIDIA's DLSS, but I do think it effectively highlights that there are ways to boost performance at higher resolutions Besides DLSS, and this Sekiro gameplay demonstrates that, whether checkerboarding or some other form of, like, reduced super sampling plus sharpening. I think there's just this assumption that unless it's some form of machine learning involved, AMD can't combat DLSS effectively. I don't think that's true, but we will just have to wait and see. And... You got to underline the word wait, because from what I'm told talking to some reviewers that already have big Navi cards in hand, there is no timeline for the release of this DLSS alternative. It's not in the reviewer's guide. They have no ETA. And so those reports that suggested it will be coming out after launch are correct, and it might be a decent amount after launch. But the good news is I have more updates about big Navi. According to what I'm told, those slides AMD showed off for this 6900 XT were not at all misleading, unlike those 2x performance claims NVIDIA made about Ampere. No, AMD was a straight shooter. The RX 6900 XT trades blows with the 3090 in 4K. And once you go below 4K, AMD wins. In fact, I'm told that if you overclock both the 3090, which really doesn't overclock almost at all, and the 6900 XT... The 6900 XT is just the stronger card if you're not talking about DLSS or ray tracing, which is another tidbit. The long and the short of it is that indeed Ampere does have a ray tracing performance advantage over Big Navi, and although I can't say the exact numbers, you just shouldn't get RDNA 2 for top tier ray tracing performance. And so let's summarize these Big Navi updates. Number one, AMD is competing in rasterization with all of NVIDIA's top Ampere cards. If you want top tier rasterization performance this holiday season, you shouldn't be afraid to get AMD. But at the same time, it is not as good at ray tracing. And although I personally believe their alternative to DLSS could be really good, no ETA on that yet. I would expect it to be out by January, but I don't think you should assume that. Um, I guess 
The last thing I want to talk about is a point I've made before that I think is really worth highlighting one more time, and that's a performance advantage AMD has that I suspect will fly under the radar, and that's the performance advantage you get from turning down settings on RDNA 2 versus on Ampere. In a nutshell, what I'm saying is this. If you look at Ampere's performance relative to other architectures, it really only shines at 4K gaming. And in fact, I think one of the reasons NVIDIA is marketing the 3090 for 8K so much is because they know that's really the only resolution they'll be able to firmly claim they win at. But most people don't game at 8K. Most people don't game at 4K. And if you do game at 4K, you probably don't always game with all settings maxed out at 100%, do you? I mean, at least I hope you're not push it, putting yourself through that because when I look at some of the recent releases, you're not getting very good performance with completely maxed out settings. Ultra is really a waste of time as Hardware Unboxed points out all the time. But do you see where I'm going with this? Ampere only seems to really be able to saturate all of those CUDA cores when it's pushed to the max. But at the max, the frame rates aren't that usable. So if you run with me with this, you know, let's say you have two cards. Let's say the 6800 XT exactly ties the 3080. But then in 4K, you notice you're getting like 45 frames per second in some game. I'm going to be honest, I really can't tell the difference between 1800p and 4K that much. So I've never been afraid to just reduce a game down to 1800p to top off my frame rates. If you do that with an AMD graphics card, you're going to get more of your frame rates back relative to NVIDIA. So I just want to emphasize this. Yes, NVIDIA has a ray tracing advantage in 4K. Yes, NVIDIA has an advantage for the time being with DLSS. But as you turn down a few settings, and I would say everyone should always be turning down a few settings, you're probably gonna get more of a performance boost back from AMD. Just some food for thought. But anyways, the summary indeed seems to be that RDNA 2 and Ampere will be competitive this fall. So what is NVIDIA going to do about it? I mean, they thought they were going to easily keep the performance crown. The lineup they have right now is incredibly exposed. Well, I've got some updates to that, and I've also got some updates to availability for both AMD and NVIDIA products. But first, please, an ad from a sponsor. Desktop CPUs are a lot like my dog. They run best in the cold. And that goes for all desktop CPUs, whether it's Zen 3, Comet Lake, or Rocket Lake. So if you get one of those shiny new processors, why not get something that cools it to its best ability? And I gotta say the Freezer 50 is definitely hefty enough to be up for the task. Arctic's Freezer 50 is a dual tower design that works on both AMD and Intel systems with fully addressable RGB and maximum performance for a lower price than the competition. Just make sure you have enough room to fit this beast in your system, but as for myself, I can't wait to use it once I can afford a big boy benchmarking station. Go to Arctic's website for more information or use the links below to find out how to buy. So how available will NVIDIA's cards be? Well, before I give you numbers, I'd be remiss if I did not mention that the Ultimate Play article I put out has turned out to be basically 100% true, especially when you talk about the fact that Gamers Nexus just put out his own report corroborating everything I've said for the past two months. The fact is, NVIDIA rushed out a launch early in an attempt to capture Mindshare with MSRPs that were hollow, they wanted to be perceived as not being the bad guy anymore and just hoped AMD wouldn't be able to compete. And the scarcity, the planned scarcity at the beginning of Ampere's launch would force up street prices to make up for the fact that AIBs were not really making much money on the cards in the initial launch. But this has entirely backfired. And, well, yeah... NVIDIA is basically retooling their entire lineup. I, I have more details now, as I already speculated on a couple weeks ago. Basically, the lineup should look somewhat like this. 
in January, you should get a 3080 Ti 20 gigabyte. I've heard similar things to what others have reported, and it should be around $1,000. And then there should be a 3070 Ti 10 gigabyte, I assume January, but I don't have any release date. This, again, around $600. So, so take a second and think about that. $1,000 3080 Ti 20 gigabyte, $600 3070 Ti 10 gigabyte, both GA102. They're kind of trying to forget the 3080 ever happened because they know it's just not competitive with Navi 21. And then, of course, below that, the 3060 Ti 8 gigabyte. I don't have a specific date for this one, but December sounds about right. And I would peg it at around 400 bucks. And then I've actually heard there is a 12 gigabyte 3060 coming, although I have to assume there are 6 gigabyte variants as well. This is, of course, based on GA106, unlike the 3060 Ti, which is GA104. And so I would just assume there's 6 gigabyte models that come in below 300, as Gamers Nexus reported, by the way. The guy's reliable. He doesn't leak often. And then the 12 gigabyte models will probably be positioned exactly against the 6700. 10 or 12 gigabyte in the 300 to 400 dollar price range and then a 6 gigabyte cut down GA106 for around about 150 to 200 no ETA on that and no ETA on what's coming below the 3050 Ti although I have heard whispers that there are refreshes of some of the lower Turing dies to fill out the you know dirt cheap uh add-in board market and as for big Navi well <laughs> AMD didn't think they'd be able to compete with the 3090, but they will. So they've increased production by about 10 to 20% based on what I'm told, but that's still just not enough to satisfy how many NVIDIA cards there aren't on the market. You know, there was supposed to be about 300,000 or really more than 300,000 GA102 cards this holiday season, and it's going to end up less than 100,000. That's not enough to satisfy high-end demand. So, well, there should be about 300,000 3070s. It's going to be AMD going for the super high-end market with what I'm told is around 100 to 200,000 big Navi cards. This is not enough to satisfy demand. These will sell out, but it is multiples more than 3080s and 3090s. So if you're there in the first 10 minutes on Newegg and Amazon, I think you should be able to get one. And by the way, AIB 6900 XTs are coming based on what I'm told. They just probably won't be ready until quarter one. So yeah, I would expect Sapphire to go for the tippy top performance crown with a 6900 XT Toxic clocked at 2.4 gigahertz or higher. And outside of that, the only other thing I have to add is Zen 3. I can now confirm from three of my best sources that over a million Zen 3 chips are planned to be sold, not shipped, sold by AMD in this quarter. So that's not quite as many as Zen 2 in quarter four of last year, but Zen 2 launched earlier than Zen 3. Zen 3 is not a paper launch. There are tons more CPUs coming. Don't be afraid to refresh Newegg. They will have stock keep flowing in, probably at a more steady trickle than Zen 2, where it was just on sale than gone back and forth over the weeks of the holidays last year. Zen 3 will keep coming in. It is being highly produced and will be highly produced into quarter one. It's just everyone wants the best gaming chips, especially when they're not $500 like they were with the 10900K. And, uh, well, yeah, that's just about all I've got to add right now. This really is an AMD-dominated holiday season. AMD isn't taking the top performance crown, but they are satisfying much more of the enthusiast demand with decent availability. But because NVIDIA isn't meeting them in that availability, they're going to sell out crazy quick. And uh, yeah, many, many more Ampere cards launching over the next six months as NVIDIA effectively redoes their entire lineup to combat not just Navi 21, but Navi 22. But Navi 22, that's another video. And I hope you will subscribe to my channel and ring the bell button so you do not miss it. Also, remember to share these videos with your friends so that they can also hear this interesting news if they're shopping this holiday season. And uh, yeah. Consider supporting me on Patreon if you have the extra cash. We have a big lineup of exclusive content coming out over the holiday season for our supporters. And as always, thank you for watching.